Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is time for the daily reminder. Allahumma alhimna wa rashida umurina wa qina shurura anfusina. Ya Allah, inspire us the guidance and protect us from the evil of our souls. It's so important to listen to the nasiha on a regular basis. Don't let your share from knowledge be just a Jum'ah khutbah. Why is that? Because uh, the, the, the effect of the lecture or the nasiha will last for a few days and then it will fade away. So it's so important to regularly listen to the reminder. For indeed the reminder is beneficial to the believers. This is what Allah Azza wa Jal said. How is going to benefit the believers when, when they are already believers? It's going to increase them in Iman. It's going to keep them on the path of Allah Azza wa Jal achieving istiqamah. So that's why we're having, we, we call it the daily reminder. Listen to it and follow it every, every day. Follow up inshallah to get the reminder that will keep you on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep your iman up. Will keep you motivated. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us the guidance. Allahumma ameen. Today's daily reminder, I want you to pay attention inshallah because we're speaking about over 30 hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, every hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by itself is a reminder. But today we're speaking, we're collecting for you 30 hadiths that started with the best. I want to be among the best, right? I'm sure anyone, if I want to better my character, I want to be the best. The best of people, the best in Iman, the best of this, the best of that. You want to be among the best and you want to be in the best. And doing the best, then this, this reminder is for you. Khayrukum. We, we, we will take about this. The hadith that starts with khayr or khayrukum. The best, the best, the best, the best. Let's start with the first one. In points as usual to make it easy for you to remember and to take notes insha'Allah. The first one. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهِ Sahih al-Bukhari. A highly authentic narration. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The best of you are those people who learn the Qur'an and teach the Qur'an. Learn the Qur'an, share the Qur'an. Learn, يعني, learn the knowledge basically, the knowledge of the Qur'an. You learn the Qur'an, you learn the, the verses. And you learn the meaning of the verses and you practice upon them and you share them with others. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهِ and, and don't say, Shaykh, but I am not a knowledgeable person, Shaykh. I am not. What can I do now? I, I don't know anything from the Qur'an. You don't know Qul Allah Ahad? True? Don't you know Qul Allah Ahad? Yes, I know Qul Allah I teach it to your children. Here, here you are. أَمَنْ خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهِ You learned Qul Allah Ahad? Recite, teach your Qul Allah Ahad. Make sure to teach it to your children. Make sure to teach the Fatiha to your children. Why? Because every time they're going to read it in their Salah, you're going to get similar reward. أخي. And every time they're going to teach it to their children, your children will teach it to their children. You're still getting the same reward because you taught your children. It's, it's a, a continuous reward that will go until Judgment Day. Ilm. There isn't a thing better than to spread knowledge. It's like these lectures, for example. It's there. Sadaqatun jariya wa ilmun yuntafa'u bih. It's considered sadaqa for us and ilm, knowledge, that people will benefit from it until Judgment Day. Some of the, those lectures are on YouTube, for example. So people listening to them and sharing them. So we're going to get similar reward. And those who share will get similar reward as well. Why? Maybe someone is going to benefit from it. And, and it's going to practice upon them. Then you're going to get reward for sharing them. And I will get reward as well for people benefiting from them. You see the, the importance of it? There's nothing better than to spread the knowledge. You can spread the knowledge. Don't say, I don't know. What stops you from knowing, from learning? You learn something now. Share it with your kids. Share it with your wife. Share it with your husband. Share it with your children. Listen together to the nasiha. Come together and listen. Say, Bismillah. Let's listen to this nasiha all together today to benefit. And to get something that will elevate our rank in Jannah and will keep us connected to Allah. So the first one, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَ The next, number two, which in 30, right? <laughs> I wanted to pay attention right until we finish it, the end, inshallah, the 31. Because you'll see so many that you didn't know. So many uh, hadith you didn't know before. Not, you're not familiar with them. It speaks about the best amongst you. Who are the best ones? خَيْرُكُمْ أَحَاسِنُكُمْ أَخْلَاقًا the best among you, those who have the best manners, the best character, akhlaq, manners, right? Something to, important to note here that you'll see there now, many hadith speaking about khayrukum, 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 khayrukum. Basically, the Prophet ﷺ was talking about from the best of people, this who does that. From the best of people, it's not like the best, the best. And sometimes it's the best, the best, because those of the best 
they are doing all of that. The best of people is teaching Quran, and obviously you have good manners, mashaAllah, and he's doing this, and he's doing all of them. They are yashtarik fi kulli shay. He's taking part in any of the, in all of that. So that's why he's khayruku. So the Prophet is just mentioning certain qualities of those people who are called the best. There are certain qualities. They have certain qualities. And the Prophet mentioned and noted those best in different ahadith and different narration. So don't think there is contradictions. Say, Sheikh, the best one is the one who learned the Quran and teach, or the one who have akhlaq and both. <laughs> both, because this is a quality and this is a quality, and both qualities can be in the same person. Understand? So Rasulullah is speaking also about those people who have these qualities. When you have it, you will be among the best of people without a doubt. So the next one he said, خِيَارُكُمْ أَحَاسِنُكُمْ أَخْلَاقًا In Bukhari, authentic narration. The best amongst you, those who have good manners, good character. They, 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 they try to better their character. You will be next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in Jannah just because of your akhlaq. Imagine you be next to Rasulullah just because of your akhlaq. أَقْرَبُكُمْ مِنِّي مَجْلِسًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَحَاسِنُكُمْ أَخْلَاقًا The dearest to, to me on the Day of Judgment, those who have good manners, they learn good manners, تَعَلِّي وَالتَّخَلِّي You pick up the good akhlaq, you forsake the good akhlaq, you see someone having some bad manners, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to be like this one. Or you see within yourself some of the bad manners, I'm going to change it. You see someone have some good manners, I want to be like this one. Someone sitting after salah and making khatm salah 33 times subhanallah, 33 times alhamdulillah, etc. Why he's doing it, I'm not doing it. Why is he better than me? Let me compete with him. In the matters of deen, compete with people who are better than you. In the matters of dunya, don't compete. In the matters of deen, compete. But this is the problem with people today. They compete in dunya. They worry about dunya. They are more concerned about dunya and forgot the akhir. No, in the matters of deen, we must compete. مَن نَافَسَكَ فِي دِينٍ فَنَافِسْهُ وَمَن نَافَسَكَ فِي دُنْيَا فَأَلْقِهَا فِي نَحْرِهِ Anyone who compete with you in deen, compete. Anyone who compete with you in dunya, leave it for them. So now compete to better your akhlaq. Compete with people to better your akhlaq, to have the best character. So when Malakul Maut comes to take your soul, you already, mashallah, you reached the best and the peak of your akhlaq. إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَيَبْلُغُ بِحُسْنِ خُلُقِهِ دَرَجَةَ الصَّائِمِ الْقَائِمِ A person will reach because of his good akhlaq the level of someone who's fasting his entire life and making salah his entire life. You can reach this position just because of your manners, your kindness, your, your truthfulness, this, this, that. So akhlaq is number two uh, of the hadith that we're having today. 30 hadith, 30 hadith. The next hadith. The next hadith here, what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ The best amongst you are those people who are best to their families. Charity starts at home. Akhlaq starts at home. Khairiya starts at home. It's not, going to benefit, uh, it's not going to benefit you to pretend outside to be good. Some people, you see them with their friends, mashallah, very well. With, pe- with their colleagues, with people at work, in the like, school, they act very well. But when they come home, they completely change. They speak without manners, without good behavior. They don't deal good with their mothers or with their fathers, or with their wives or with their husbands or with their sisters or with their brothers. This is not the way. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, the best amongst you are those people who are good to their family, the close circle. Why the close circle? Because basically you can't pretend. Amongst them you can't pretend. Your real character will appear amongst your family. Your real character will appear at home. You can't pretend at home. Everyone will pick you up. So if they give witness for you, this is for you. You are a good person. Your wife said, this is a good, my husband is a good man. Truly, you are a good man. You deal good because they can see the khair that's coming from you. They can see that this is a salih person. Allah, he makes salah, he do ibadah, he gives charity, he got a good heart. My husband is a good, is a good person, or my wife. All right. So it starts at home. It starts at home. Some of the narration mention that in the shirar in nas from the most wicked amongst people. When he dakhala baytahu, when he enters his house, khashat al mar'a wa far al sibyan, the wife will keep quiet. And the children will run away from him. No one likes him coming back home. That kind of husband. The lion entered the cave now. Everyone must keep quiet. Why? He lash everyone. He start to comment about everything. Criticize everybody. <laughs> Some people like this. May Allah Azza wa Jal give them hidayah. May Allah give them hidayah. Let, make sure that when you enter your house, everyone is happy. Your wife is receiving you there by the garage, by the door. And your children running towards you. That came. Right? Some people, vice versa. When they come home, 
Everyone ran away from them. No one received them. And everyone is quiet. Once the, the, the father goes away, ah, they start to breathe. Alhamdulillah, he went away. Right? Like this. Can you imagine this situation? Are you that one? May Allah protect you. May Allah protect us all. Allahumma, we want to be that person. Al-Mu'min, ilfun yu'laf. The believer is ilfun yu'laf. Have akhlaq and manners. And his akhlaq or her akhlaq starts at home. Where you, 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 you first people to benefit from your manners, your, your wife, your kids, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, the people around you. Then widen the circle, even outside, your neighbors, etc. And then widen the circle, the whole ummah or the whole world, or all the creations of Allah Azza wa Jal. The next one. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ أَطْعَمَ الطَّعَامْ وَرَدَّ السَّلَامِ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Pay attention. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, The best amongst you, those people who feed the hungry and, re- and re- respond to the greeting from the qualities of the best of people. They feed the hungry. Whenever they fee- fi- find someone is hungry, they feed those people. They take care of them. They love to feed the food, to, to give food to the hungry people. And respond to the greeting. Ikhwah, wallahi al-azim, I take a qasam by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are a lot of, a lot of hunger out there in our communities. Sometimes we don't perceive that, but it's there. And we need to look for those people who are hungry. Some people dying out of hunger. We used to say it in the, in the past, there's no one that dies out of hunger. No, there is. <laughs> there is. In Africa, we are in Africa, right? In Asia, in many parts of the world, there are so many people that die out of hunger. In Palestine, in Gaza, it's time to do something. Allah is testing you to do something. Be the Khalifa of Allah on earth. Live to your purpose. Your purpose is to, to, to you are there to make the world a better place by worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ أَطْعَمَ الطَّعَامِ You find someone is angry, you help them. Don't wait for them to come to beg you. Or to t- you check the conditions of the people around you. أَطْعَمَ الطَّعَامِ وَرَدَّ السَّلَامِ And you always respond to the greeting. They respond to the greeting, will will do what? It's a dua. The greeting is a dua. The greeting of Islam is a dua. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, blessings, mercy of Allah and His blessings be upon you. When you, when you greet someone, you get 30 hasanat. When someone responds, he gets also 30 hasanat. Right? Just for the greeting. And it's a dua. You make, we're making dua for one another. You're making dua for the mercy, for the blessings, for, for the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So obviously you're going to receive it and he's going to receive it. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ أَطْعَمَ الطَّعَامِ وَرَدَّ السَّلَامِ The next point here, إخوة, is خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ يُرْجَى خَيْرُهُ وَيُؤْمَنُ شَرَّهُ The best amongst you is the one who you expect good from him. You always expect good from them. And you don't expect evil from them. يُؤْمَنْ شَرُّهُ You know, this one is not going to hurt you. No, he's a good person. He's not going to hurt me. He's not going to cause any harm to me. This is the best amongst people according to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa or from the qualities of the best people. So explain that some of those qualities or all of those qualities can be in the same one. Or even if you have some of those qualities, then inshallah, hopefully, you will be also among the best of people. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ يُرْجَى خَيْرُهُ The hadith is in At-Tirmidhi. Any one of you who, is, um, uh, who people uh, expect good from him, expect that he's a good person, expect he's going to do good to them, this is someone who, who, who is under this title. You, uh, the best of people. You know that uh, even if he got angry, even if he is like this, like that, it's not going to uh, hurt me or it's not going to uh, oppress me in any way. The next point. The best of people are those people who are more beneficial to people. The more you are helpful, the more you are the easygoing person, the one who people come to him to fulfill their needs, this is the one. This is the best of people. He's indeed from the best of people. خيركم, خير الناس, للناس. The best of people are those people who are always beneficial. They'll take the extra mile to support you. You will always come to him. My, my brother is going to be for me. He's going to stand for me. I come to him. You see people coming to you, knocking the, your, your door. You should understand that they left so many doors. They came to your door, expecting good from you, because you help, you support, or you will help. That's why they came to you, they didn't come to anyone else. So you should tabdhu al-khayr. When Sayyidina Khadija radiallahu anha was spo- uh, speaking about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he came from the, the mountain, seeing the angel for the first time, he said to him, 
لا يخزيك الله ابدا الله ولا تتي داون محمد انك لا تصل الرحم وتحمل الكل وتكسب المعدوم وتق وتقري الضيف وتعين على نوائب الدهر See, all these qualities are qualities that got to do with benefiting mankind he said you are the one who helped the poor you are the one when you see someone is in difficulty you support him you are the one who helped the uh, the needy and the passing by people you are the one who take care of the guest you are the one who take care of the neighbor she started mentioning the qualities of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam nasi the best of people are those who are more beneficial to people is this in your life in your life you are more supportive you are more helpful you will uh, take the extra mile to support someone is in difficulty Or you say, it's not my business. Sorry, it's not my business. If someone got a puncture on the road, will you stop to help him or you just pass and turn a blind eye as if you didn't see him? This is, this is your purpose in life. Make the world a better place. Serving mankind, serving humanity, helping them for the sake of Allah. Azza wa Jal. Understand? Khayrun nasi anfa'ahum li nas. Coming to the next point. The next point, ikhwa. Khayyarukum alladhina idha ru'u dhukir Allah. Allah oh, is beautiful one, this one. This is the best among you. But when you see them, you will start remembering Allah. You will start, you'll start making dhikr. By just watching them or seeing them, la ilaha, you, you, you'll engage in dhikr. You, 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 and you'll get, you, you, you'll, you'll show respect and humble and you'll start remembering Allah just by seeing them. Seeing the features of salah. Seeing the nur on their faces. So you see them, you, 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 sh- you, you become respectful. And you remember Allah Azza wa Jal. And you talk well. And you watch your tongue. You don't utter any foul word or any bad langu- language there. Why? Because this person is a salih person. You know? I can't speak ill in, in, in front of him. You show, you show respect to the maqam of the salih person. This is, this is a salih. Khiyarukum. These, these are the best people. When you just see them, when you just look at them, you see the features of salah. Samt sunnah. And the nur in the face. And so you humble and you remember Allah Azza wa Jal. And you want to be like this one. And you want to have same manners and, and same way of speaking and same why like this one? You remember Allah I want to be like this. I want to have my akhlaq like this one. I want to get closer from Allah like this one. Qiyarukum man idha ru'u dhukir Allah. When you when you see them, you remember Allah Azza wa Jal. And also it can mean that when you see them, you remember Allah because they talk to you about Allah. They will remind you of Allah Azza wa Jal. They won't, they won't just come, you, you come to you and you come and sitting with them and you just go like that. No, they'll always talk to you about Allah. Those best of people, when you sit with them in any gathering, they will, they will not only talk dunya, they will talk dunya, they'll come and take, they, they talk dunya, but they will also talk, talk akhirah, and they remind you of Allah. And you'll come from there remembering Allah Azza wa Jal because you sit with them. Those are the best of people indeed. They'll, they'll, they'll teach you something. Whether they'll teach you practically, By, by, by their manners or they will teach you verbally they'll remind you of Allah Azza wa Jal and that reminder is going to be beneficial for you so you'll remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Sani Ikhwa the next one خَيْرُ النَّاسِ مَنْ طَالَ عُمُرُهُ وَحَسُنَ عَمَلَهُ the best of people are those people who live long and they do get good logically this is understandable yeah? they live long and they're doing well so obviously if they live long and doing well then they'll, they will be the best Why? Because they'll reap so much of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they live longer and they did better and, and, and vice versa. Someone did longer but he's doing evil. <laughs> he's among the, the most wicked people. Why? Living long but he's doing evil in that long, in that long period of time, in the lifespan. But someone, no, he lived for long but, but mashallah, Allah azza wa jal uh, uh, enabled him to do so much of khair, so much of uh, uh, good amal, charitable work, taking part here, there, lift ilm, lift kutub, lift this, lift that, mashallah. So people still remember him for a long time. Why? He lived with them for a long time and he died with iman, subhanallah. Qiyarukum man tala umuruhu wa hasuna amaluhu. Tayyib, the next one. Khayrun nasi dhul qalbil makhmoom. واللسان الصادق صحيح الجامع he said صلى الله عليه وسلم the best of people those people who have a sound heart they have a sound heart they have sound hearts and they have a truthful tongue sound hearts truthful tongue sound hearts the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم explained it in another hadith he said كل مخ... ألا ألا أنبئكم بأهل الجنة should I teach you who are the people of paradise he said كل مخموم القلب صدوق اللسان everyone who have a sound heart and A truthful tongue. So the companion said, a truthful tongue, we know. But who is makhmu- what is the meaning of makhmum al-qalb? Sound heart in which way? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, 
that heart, that person who have a heart that is free from shirk. You don't depend upon anyone but, but Allah. You only worship Allah Azza wa Jal and uh, uh, depend upon Allah. Free from envy, free from hasad, free from hatred, free from grudge, free from ill feelings. This is the meaning of Mahmoom al Qalb. The heart is like gold. Their heart is such a pure, clean heart. They don't hate anyone. They keep, Alhamdulillah. Those are the ilf on yu'laf. Those peace best of people are easy. They are kind people. Sometimes you look at them and say, ah, oh, he's, he's, a, he's a good man, don't worry. This one, sometimes people think they are weak. They're not weak, but they are good people. Sometimes some people, they look at them and they, they think that they are weak because they didn't respond, or they, but they are the good people, the most good people. Those are the best of people. They have sound, such beautiful, soft hearts. Those are the people of Jannah. Allah Akbar. وَلِسَانُ وَلِسَانُ الصَّادِقِ لِسَانُ الصَّادِقِ And they always speak the truth. Always investigate telling truth. Those are the, the best of people as well. The next point, Ikhwah. قَالَ صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ The Prophet صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ said, say صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ لَمْ يَتْرُكْ آخِرَتَهُ لِدُنْيَاهُ وَلَمْ يَتْرُكْ دُنْيَاهُ لِآخِرَتِهِ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ كَلَّنْ عَلَى النَّاسِ The Prophet صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ said, the best amongst you, that one who does not leave his akhirah or forsake his akhirah because of his dunya. And he's not distracted with dunya from working for the akhirah. He's always remembering the akhirah, the next life. This is the best of people who is not distracted by the materialistic life. This materialistic life occupied the minds of so many people from the morning right until the evening, thinking dunya, 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 dunya. Where is the akhirah? Oh, God. Make sure to be among the best of people in that way that you're not distracted. Don't let dunya distract you. Live that simple life. Live that simple life. لِيَكُنْ زَادَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا كَزَادَ الرَّاكِبْ وَكَبُلْغَةِ الرَّاكِبْ Let there be your provision from dunya. Simple provision because dunya is temporary. Dunya is a temporary life. So don't, don't be distracted with all these materialistic things and you forget, and you forget your akhirah. So Rasulullah Sallallahu mentioned that the best from the best of people, that one who does not leave and forsake his akhirah and just thinking dunya, 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 dunya. Right? And vice versa. And he also said, and that one who also does not completely forsake dunya and, 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 and only think of the akhirah in a way that he, he forsake the dunya, meaning that he forsake the essential things, the important things. M- m- marriage? I'm not going to marry. Why? No, I'm going to marry in the, in the akhirah. No, it's not right. Why? Rasulullah sallam married. The halal enjoyment that Allah azza wa jal prepared for you, you should take it, you should accept it. Because this is what's going to help you. To, 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 to reach. So whatever Allah Azza wa Jal made lawful for you from the halal enjoyment, take it, but don't be distracted with it. There is a limit. There is a th- thin line. Yes, work for dunya for in a way that you, you, you benefit yourself, benefit your family. That's why the Prophet in the same hadith said, وَلَمْ يَكُنْ كَلَّنْ عَلَى النَّاسِ كَلَّنْ عَلَى النَّاسِ يعني dependent on people. He must not be dependent on people. From the best of people, those who are not dependent on others. Why, why they are dependent on others? Because they left dunya. They said, no, we're just going to sit. We're not going to do anything. We're just going to worship Allah the whole day for the akhirah. But this is not right. You are dependent on others now. You're supposed to work to sustain yourself, sustain your family, sustain your children, take care of them. And this is ibadah by itself, by the way, if you make the intention and the niyyah, your work, your job will be, you get thawab whenever you go because you want to suffice yourself from halal and suffice your family from halal. And this is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu about that. That when you go, be talab al-halal, see, making amal, uh, job, your job, then Allah forgive you because of that. Understand? So don't let, don't let uh, yourself oppress yourself in, in a way that you, you, don't do, you don't do anything for dunya or you don't do anything for akhirah. Balance, the balance is the right thing. Take the dunya as a tool to reach to the akhirah. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Clearly, explicitly, seek in that which Allah Azza wa Jal granted you the life of the hereafter, and don't forget your share from dunya, meaning your share from the lawful enjoyment that Allah made it lawful. Don't make it haram upon yourself. Some will make it haram upon, upon themselves. I'm going to fast the whole life. It happened during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I said some Sahabi said, "I'm going to fast the entire life, and I'm not going to break my fast ever." Someone said, "I'm going to remain. I'm going to remain." Awake at night in ibadah to Allah my entire life. 
And the third said, as for me, I'm not going to marry my women my entire life. The Prophet heard them, sallallahu alayhi wa So he said, as for me, I fast and sometimes I break my fast. Talking about nafil fast, extra fast, not Ramadan. And I make uh, Salatul Qiyam. Sometimes I stay in Qiyam for part of the night and, and the other part of the night I sleep. So I min al-layli wa anam. And I marry women. فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي Anyone who dislikes my sunnah or don't follow my sunnah is not part of me. This is the way. You might be able to do that, but no, if you exaggerate, you make it difficult for yourself. The way of Rasulullah Sallam is the correct way, is the easiest way for everyone. So don't try to exaggerate and make it difficult and tough for yourself, then you fail. No, no, try to make it easy for yourself. Follow the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallam and make it easy for yourself. And the Saniyah one. فَيُرُكُمْ مَنْ لَمْ يَتْرُكْ آخِرَتَهُ لِدُنْيَاهُ وَلَا دُنْيَاهُ لِآخِرَتِهِ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ كَلًّا عَلَى النَّاسِ كَلًّا عَلَى النَّاسِ يعني dependent on others. Part of this, under this point, كَلًّا عَلَى النَّاسِ Some people are كَلًّا عَلَى زَوْجَاتِهِمْ They are dependent on their wives. They don't go for work, they don't go for anything. Or sometimes they leave their wives and their kids and they don't know, and the wife doesn't know where. It happens to me. People t- tell me a lot of, uh, sometimes you come for question, uh, marital advice, family advice, etc. You say, Sheikh, you know, my husband, I don't know where is he. For a few months, I didn't see him. Or I'm the breadwinner, Sheikh, and I don't know w- 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 from where to get uh, the income. Everything is too, too, too expensive. And where is your husband? I don't know. He's sitting at home. Or he's on drug, or he's in addiction, or is and and leaving his family. What are you doing? He's, he became kallan ala zawjati. He became dependent on his wife instead of supposed to be the other way. The other way. You support to, to take care of your family and children. Kullukum ra'in, wa kullukum mas'ulun al ra'iyati. All of you are like a shepherd, and all of you are going to be questioned by Allah Azza wa Jal for those who are dependent on you. The husband is the ra'i, the main the main person. You take care of the whole family, take care of everything, the rent, you take care of the children's schools, the fees, the clothes, the food, everything. But you're not doing that and you're sitting and relaxing. Allah is going to question you. Allah Azza wa is going to question you. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi considered this ithm, ithm, yani sin, a sinful act. الإثم, he said it is considered ithm, evil, to let those people who are dependent on you go into reunion, go into destruction. Go out to beg or go out. Why? Because you, the husband is not doing his duty. He's supposed to work. He's supposed to go find something to, to nourish his family. But he's not doing so. Make tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal and fix yourself. طيب. The next one, Ikhwa. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Almost done. Right? There are so many actually. Uh, maybe I mentioned 30, but we, we cannot finish the 30 in that time. But we'll, we'll mention it in some other programs, inshallah. The next one. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khayru al-amali. أن تفارق الدنيا ولسانك رطب من ذكر الله. He said the best of actions is that you leave this dunya while your tongue is moist with the remembrance of Allah. When you leave the dunya, you are يعني ذاكر. The best of people are those people who are ذاكرين who always keep the word Allah on their tongue. Those are the best of people. وكان منهم صلى الله عليه وسلم كان أذكرهم لله. He was the most person to remember Allah سبحانه وتعالى. سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu anhu says, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم دائم الذكر في جميع أحياني. He used to be always making dhikr at all conditions. They say, see him always sitting with him and listening softly to him reciting some adhkar. And they count for him how many istighfar in the majlis. And when he uh, comes out of his house, there is a dhikr that he recites. When he comes in his house, there is a dhikr that he recites. When he see the rain, there is a dhikr. When he g- climb up a mountain, there is a dhikr. When he come down, when, uh, this is the, when he enters the toilet, when he comes out of the toilet, when you look into the mirror, there, are, there is ev- dhikr for everything. Where did we learn it from? From Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because his entire life was dhikr. You need to memorize this, that car. Learn them. Practice, keep it, keep the word Allah on your tongues of Malakul Maut, Kama, Alhamdulillah. Dhakir said the best of people. those indeed the best of people, those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On judgment day, such people, they will be called, an angel will call out. The narration says, Nada munadin. And the caller will call out to say, Sayyalamul Jamuman Awla Bil Karam. The gathering today on judgment day will know who are the most honored people. Who are the most honored people? Everyone will be anticipating. Who are those people? They say, "ليقوم الذين لا تنهاهم تجارة ولم تنهاهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله." Let those people who are not 
being this, who were not in dunya, they were not distracted from tij with the tijara, with the business, with the dealings, transactions, etc. They were not distracted from remembering Allah Azza wa Those are the people. Then they'll enter Jannah. ثم يحاسب الله باقي الخلق. They will enter Jannah without reckoning, without judgment, and then Allah will judge the rest of the people. See the manzila of those people. Be among them. Be among them together with other qualities, the zakirin and the other qualities that we mentioned today. Insha Allah, and share this knowledge with others to benefit them. So you get similar reward. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us among the best of people in this dunya and in the akhirah. Allahumma amin ya Rabbi alamin. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه والحمد لله رب العالمين